In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to edit 6K footage in DaVinci Resolve on the M4 Mac Mini. Now, I know a lot of you have been asking, how do you edit some of these higher-end codecs from cameras like the Red Komodo, the Blackmagic 6K that shoot raw and shoot above 4K? And so in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set up DaVinci Resolve in order to edit and have smooth playback on footage from cameras like the Komodo, the Blackmagic, even some of the raw footage from the Sony FX30. I'm gonna show you the settings by the way, if you get knowledge out of today's video, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos from the channel. All right, so I have DaVinci open right here, and I put a few different clips from different cameras in the timeline so we could see how they play back at 4K. So this first clip is Red Komodo 6K footage in anamorphic. Uh, it's 6K 24P, and it's not color graded. So this is how it plays back, not color graded on a 4K timeline. And as you can see, it's pretty smooth. Uh, there's really no issues, but again, we haven't done anything to the footage yet whatsoever. But this entire scene plays back no problems whatsoever. And then this next scene right here, this is Blackmagic 6K footage from the uh, Cinema Camera 6K. And as you can see, that's smooth too. And then we're going to see uh, FX30 footage right here, but this is actually FX30 raw footage. So it's 4.7K uh, and it's using CDNG. So uh, that's that's playing back smooth right now. And then here's some Mavic 3 Pro footage, easy 10-bit footage. Uh, and I figured I'd show a few different challenging codecs to you. Uh, and we'll see how they look before we change or do anything with the timeline and do any color corrections. So first, I'm gonna show you right here, we are on a 4K timeline. And that's where um, you know most people want to be editing in. With the Mac Mini and certain codecs in a 4K timeline, you're going to see right here after I color grade everything that you're going to have to make some changes and make some compromises if you're going to want to edit some high-end codecs on this really affordable $599 machine. All right, so I did my color grades, and as you could see off the bat, all of a sudden the Komodo 6K footage is super stuttery, and I just did a grade using Dehancer and the footage is no longer smooth. I mean, it was buttery smooth before we did this, but this is kind of why, again, when you're paying $599, you're gonna have to make some compromises. So this footage now, the playback is is not too great. It, but then when you go to the Blackmagic 6K footage, it's actually not bad. Uh, this is color corrected and the playback is pretty smooth. And then when we look at the FX30 raw footage, it's smooth for the most part. Uh, I had a few drop frames when I was looking at it before, but it's a little smoother than the red. And then of course the 10 bit from the Mini 3 Pro is smooth as butter. But with the red, you still have issues. So now what we're gonna have to go do is we're gonna go change the timeline settings. And this is how you're gonna get smooth playback of the red Komodo footage. So first, you're gonna go to the camera raw profile and you're gonna go to red. Then you're gonna go to decode quality. You're gonna wanna go to 1 8th and then make sure you choose 16 bit as well for the raw. Then, as you can see, it's still slow playback because we haven't changed the timeline yet, but you do have to change your decode quality on the red in order to just have smoother playback. So it's really just with raw codecs you have to do this, but I wanna show you the red just to have an example. So here's changing the timeline to 1080p and then Everything's smooth, really no problems whatsoever. So again, this is no effects added, no noise reduction, but this is just color graded red 6K footage. By changing it to 1080p, you get completely smooth playback. And then of course, B-RAW, you're not gonna have any issues. When we get to the FX30 footage, we're not gonna have any issues either. Um, the 1080p solves most of the problems. As long as you don't use any kinds of effects, once you bring it down to 1080p, you're fine. All the footage will play back smooth. But then what happens if you wanna use effects? Because that's pretty much the weakness of this computer. You really can't use fusion effects and get smooth playback at 4K or 1080 with some of this higher end footage. So here's some example footage right here. And you can see as soon as it hits this fusion effect, the red Komodo footage just starts to slow down a little bit. It's not quite as bad as when it was at 4K, and this is just one example of using Fusion. So we're gonna change the timeline settings on here now to 720p, and then as you're gonna see, once you do playback, even if you're using Fusion effects, it starts playing back smooth again. So with the Mac Mini, it all comes down to you're gonna have to make compromises if you wanna edit with certain camera codecs and have effects and whatnot, but it can be done this isn't gonna be a solution for all work though, especially some of the pros on the higher end. You may not be able to render out effects in 720p or 1080p. It may be 4K dependent, especially if you're using face masks, any kind of advanced tracking, you're gonna need the higher resolution. So if you do that, 
this isn't going to be a solution for you. You're going to need a minimum of an M4 Pro Mac Mini. If you don't do that kind of stuff, and if you do these workarounds, you can edit high-end footage on this insanely cheap computer. So it's one of the reasons that the Mac Mini is just an incredible value. So last thing you're going to do is you're going to go change the project settings once you're done with your edit, and then you're going to change it back to 4K. And once you do that, you're good to go. As long as you didn't need to do anything like crazy masks, any kind of crazy effects, you can go switch from 720 to 4K or 1080 to 4K and you'll get your full quality back when exporting at 4K. So I hope I was able to help shed some light on how I'm able to edit with these crazy advanced codecs on the base model M4 Mac Mini. It is an insane value. If you have any questions, make sure to let me know in the comments below. And if you got knowledge and value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos on the channel. And until next time, my name's Jeff Fagan. Thank you for watching as always, and I will catch you in the next video.